Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we have another big GPU benchmark comparison for you. And this one is comparing the GeForce RTX 3070 Ti and Radeon RX 6800. Now I have to admit, I wasn't really that excited for this comparison. I wasn't really that keen to spend a week benchmarking these two cards. And that's largely because the RX 6800 wasn't a particularly exciting pro well, no that's probably not true it just wasn't a very popular product though i think it's fair to say that was largely due to all the cryptocurrency booming issues that we saw over the last few years amd focused their supply on the 6800 xt and 6900 xt weren't that many of these available of course graphics card pricing was pretty bad but anyway not a, not a huge amount of these sold uh, probably not a huge amount of these sold either, but a lot of you have asked me to make this comparison, so I'm going to get on with it. The RX 6800 though does look to be well stocked these days. You can snag one for just below the MSRP, though I don't necessarily recommend anyone runs out and buys either of these GPUs just yet, and that's for two reasons. Firstly, next-gen GPUs are right around the corner, probably just a month or two away at this point, and they're expected to be much faster. So for those of you seeking high-end performance, you'd be better off shopping for a next-gen GPU. The other reason being, once next-gen GPUs are announced, and we expect Nvidia will do so in the next week, it's highly likely that prices of current-gen GPUs, such as the RTX 3070 Ti and RX 6800, will tumble. Oh, and the third reason being that the Ethereum merge has just happened, so there's a good chance the second-hand market will be flooded with GPUs. So really, it is the perfect storm that should see gamers finally rewarded with cheap graphics card options. So, although I don't recommend you run out and buy either of these GPUs right now, I am interested to see how they compare in late 2022 with a range of new games and, of course, the latest display drivers. Now, as it stands, Radeon RX 6800 graphics cards can be had for as little as $550 US, with most models priced between $550 and $600, and given the MSRP is $580, it is possible to find some good models for less than that. Then we have the GeForce RTX 3070 Ti, which claims an MSRP of $600, but even today still sells for a little over that, with the cheapest models listed at $630 US, though most range more up towards $680 US. So, a small price advantage there for the Radeon GPU, which isn't bad given it does pack twice as much VRAM with 16GB versus just 8GB for the RTX 3070 Ti. Having said that though, the 3070 Ti does offer better ray tracing support, and at present DLSS 2.0 is more broadly supported. So, given those factors, you might expect to pay less for the Radeon GPU. Now, in total, I've tested 52 games at 1440p and 4K using the Radeon RX 5800X 3D and 32GB of dual rank dual channel memory, and please note, resizable bar was enabled for all of this testing. Then for the display drivers, we have Radeon Adrenaline Edition 22.8.2, and for the GeForce GPU's Game Ready Driver 516.94. As usual, we'll go over the data for about a dozen of the games tested, and then we'll take a look at all 52 games in a single graph, but please note all graphs will be made available to Floatplane and Patreon members. Okay, let's get into it. Starting with ACC, we find very comparable results between these two GPUs at 1080p, as the 3070 Ti was a mere 4% faster. However, bumping up the resolution of 4K did hand the GeForce GPU an advantage, as here it was 16% faster, hitting 133 FPS on average, compared to 115 FPS for the RX 6800. So, a rather significant performance advantage here. The Outer Worlds isn't a great title for Radeon GPUs as it uses the Unreal Engine 4, but even so, the Radeon RX 6800 is reasonably competitive, and I'd say AMD's recent DirectX 11 optimizations are helping here. As a result, the RTX 3070 Ti was just 5% faster at 1440p, though it was up to 12% faster at 4K, and that did see it push up over 60 FPS, hitting 67 FPS on average. Resident Evil Village has been benchmarked using the ray tracing preset, and at 1440p, this handed the RTX 3070 Ti a slim 6% win, though interestingly, increasing the resolution to 4K neutralized the margins as both GPUs are seen rendering 79 FPS on average. This is one of the better ray tracing examples for AMD though, so let's look at a less favorable example. This time, using Dying Light 2, I've again simply enabled the ray tracing preset and these are the results. Neither are particularly impressive, and really, even with an RTX 3070 Ti, you'll want to drop down to 1080p, which might result in a 60 FPS experience. So although the RTX 3070 Ti was almost 40% faster at 1440p, 
it's somewhat of a meaningless win in my opinion, though that margin should remain similar at 1080p, which I expect it would. And if you're happy gaming at 1080p and you want to enjoy RTFX in this title, then the 3070 Ti really is a must. However, if you don't care for RTFX or believe the performance hit, which basically halves the frame rate, just isn't justified, then the RX 6800 actually does really well in this title, offering 10% more performance than the 3070 Ti at 1440p and 15% more at 4K. And this is with the higher quality preset enabled. You're also looking at well over 80 FPS at 1440p with the Radeon GPU. Sniper Elite 5 is a 2022 release that appears to run really well on both AMD and NVIDIA GPUs. At 1440p, the RX 6800 was just 6% faster, while at 4K, that margin halved to just 3%. So basically identical performance with both pushing over 70 FPS. And that's a good level of performance given we're using the ultra quality preset. God of War is also seen to play really nicely using either Ampere or RDNA 2 GPUs as both the 3070 Ti and RX 6800 delivered the same level of performance at both tested resolutions. We're also looking at just shy of 60 FPS at 4K using the ultra quality preset, which enables a breathtaking gaming experience in this one. Here we have yet another newly released AAA blockbuster title in Halo Infinite, where both GPUs delivered virtually identical performance. Again, you're looking at around 60 FPS at 4K with the ultra quality preset, and this title looks great at least for the single player portion, and I'd say this is a very satisfactory level of performance. Now, Counter-Strike Global Offensive is largely CPU bound, though it is interesting to note that the RTX 3070 Ti dropped in performance by 17% when going from 1440p to 4K, while the RX 6800 only saw a 6% decrease. Either way though, performance overall was fairly comparable. The RTX 3072 was a little faster at 1440p, while the RX 6800 was a little faster at 4K. Watch Dogs Legion is really interesting as this title is an Nvidia sponsored game and yet it plays much better on the RX 6800, even at 4K, where 65 FPS on average was possible. The 1440p margin though was huge, here the Radeon GPU was 21% faster pumping out an impressive 119 FPS. Now Assassin's Creed Valhalla, that's been tested using the second highest quality preset, and with the aid of resizable bar, the RX 6800 is able to achieve 60 FPS at 4K and push over 100 FPS at 1440p. And this meant it was 27% faster than the RTX 3070 Ti at 1440p, and 33% faster at 4K, so a big win here for the Radeon GPU. Forza Horizon 5 also plays well with Radeon GPUs and benefits immensely from resizable bar support. As a result, the RX 6800 was 27% faster at 1440p and 26% faster at 4K, so again, big wins here for the Radeon GPU. So based on the dozen or so games we just looked at, the RTX 3070 Ti and RX 6800 appear to be pretty evenly matched, extremely close in a lot of those games. Of course, there were a few titles that did heavily favor one over the other, but I think for the most part, the performance did appear very similar. Still, I did spend about a week testing through just over 50 games, so let's go check out the data. Okay, so based on the data from my day one review, the RTX 3070 Ti was 8% slower than the RX 6800 at 1440p, though that was only a dozen game sample. Now, a little over a year later, with over 50 games, we find that on average, the 3070 Ti was just 5% slower. Now, if you want to remove the RT-enabled Dying Light 2 results, which can be considered an outlier, that margin changes by a percent to 6%. So not a big deal in the grand scheme of things. Now, jumping up to the 4K resolution did reduce the margin further, and now the RTX 3070 Ti was just 3% slower on average, or 4% if you want to remove the Dying Light 2 ray tracing result. Either way though, performance overall is very similar. Now it is worth noting that games where the RTX 3070 Ti does well relative to the RX 6800 are predominantly based on the Unreal Engine 4. Games such as ACC, Gears 5, PUBG, The Outer Worlds, and Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order as prime examples. Meanwhile, the RX 6800 excelled in games such as Doom, which uses the id Tech 7 game engine, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which uses the Anvil Next 2.0 game engine, a Forza Horizon 5 using the Forza Tech engine, World War Z using the Swarm engine, Hitman 3 using the Glacier 2 engine, and then F122 using the Ego engine. So not a single Unreal Engine game to speak of. Okay, so last time I compared the RX 6800 with the original RTX 3070, so the non-tie version, 
I blurted out something like 1200 words for the conclusion. Took a long time. Uh, I want to try and avoid that this time. So I think we'll start with, well, we'll summarize the takeaway from the previous video. The RX 6800 was priced too closely to the RTX 3070, given how much weaker the ray tracing performance was, and of course the lack of a DLSS competitor, given that at the time FSR was yet to be unveiled. Now, although it did have twice as much VRAM, which I viewed as a huge positive, it's worth noting that at the time there were very few examples I could cite where this actually made a difference. And even today, the RTX 3070 Ti, which still has 8GB of VRAM, seems to get by pretty well. But there are certainly more instances where performance takes a hit, especially in a number of games with RTFX enabled. So at the end of the day, as it stands right now, an RTX 3070 Ti based graphics card will typically cost you at least 15% more, and outside of ray tracing there are almost no examples where it was 15% faster than the RX 6800. Still, if we go by the average performance, the RTX 3070 Ti was about 5% slower, so you are certainly paying a premium for the GeForce GPU. Meanwhile, DLSS is still generally superior to FSR, though support for FSR is improving and AMD is continuing to advance the technology. And in many instances, they're just so close now in terms of image quality that most gamers aren't going to be able to tell the difference. And therefore, I believe DLSS has become far less of a key selling point of RTX graphics cards since I last compared the non-TI 3070 and RX 6800, given that there was no FSR competitor at that time. So as it stands, the big win for NVIDIA here is the superior ray tracing performance, and the big win for AMD is the massive VRAM buffer offering twice the capacity at 16 gigabytes. I think with pricing relatively close and rasterization performance fairly similar across a large sample of games, it really comes down to what you prefer, a big memory buffer or better RT support. If the Radeon GPU was say 20% cheaper, I think it would be the obvious choice for me. But again, if you want that ray tracing performance, then paying a hefty premium might be worth it. Likewise, if the GeForce GPU was 10 to 15% cheaper, then I think it would be the more obvious choice, assuming that you don't place too much stock in having the much larger VRAM buffer. Anyway, there's really not much more to say here that I haven't already said in, I don't know, a few dozen past Ampere versus RDNA 2 matchups. So I think I'm going to leave it at that and get back to benchmarking. But of course, if you do want a more thorough Conclusion, I believe it was about a 40 game benchmark comparing the RX 6800 and RTX 3070. So just go to the search bar or the little, the, the Harbour Unboxed page, click the search icon, search for that and you'll find it and you'll get my 1200 plus word conclusion. Anyway, after this one, if you enjoyed the video, please do give it a like. It was a heap of testing. I don't know if I'm going to go back and compare this with the RTX 3070. I'm not sure if there's much point doing that, but of course I'll read your comments, get some feedback there and, and see what we should do next. Uh, yeah, make sure you've liked, subscribe, all that stuff. Uh, Patreon float plane, links to those video description. You get access to our exclusive Discord server, monthly live streams, Q and A's and behind the scenes content. Tim should have another update soon on his studio progress. You probably haven't seen a lot of videos from Tim over the last few weeks, probably about three weeks now. He's hoping to do a bit of content next week, but it'll still be in his old studio. But anyway, the delay has been the build. He's building a new studio. He's just got the, the floors are done now. It's all plastered up. It's painted. So we're at the uh, process of putting a few desks in there for testing, building some sets, all that sort of stuff. So yeah, there's some cool behind the scenes videos that show that whole process if you're interested. And hopefully we'll see Tim back on the channel uh, with a lot more content in the near future. Anyway, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.